Well, good morning. It's Bobby Lee from Hurricane Creek Farms. And oh my goodness, did that bull really do to himself, injure himself in the way that I think he did. I don't know. We're going to have to get him up to the barn and check and see. But we appreciate y'all watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we'll see if we can trail him up to the barn. All right, so we're taking advantage of the cooler temperatures this morning. Got the horses up, got Ace saddled, can hop on him, ride back there, um, look at the cows. Got to check on that new baby calf that was born yesterday as well. But uh, flies are bad, sprayed him really good. Hopefully they'll leave us alone, um, at least relatively speaking. And does anybody want to guess which cow that is out here in the wrong pasture? We don't even have to guess. We know it's cow number 503 who just simply jumps the fences and goes wherever she wants. And, and here's what's silly, like it makes no sense. I mean, look, there's grass out here. It's, it's fine. It's plenty to graze, especially for just one cow. But the pasture they're in, we just moved them in there two days ago, I think. A lot of weeds in there too, but more than enough grass, probably more grass than there is out here. But she just ain't content. But um, we already know what her future holds because of this rogue behavior. Let's watch her. She's going to jump right there, just this side of the gate. Watch her. There she goes. Up and over. Oh, kind of over. But yeah. Just zero respect. And we will not tolerate that, not for the long term. She jumps right there every time. The wires are loose because of it. I tighten them back up. A few days later, she jumps it again. But yes, look, look at all this grass. Now again, lots of weeds too, but plenty of grazing in here. But she's just, she's just gonna be contrary. We're, we're pretty well just at that point with her right now. We, we come to know it and expect it. Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get you a close enough look out here in the pasture and on horseback, especially with all these weeds that hide everything, but Make can appreciate it a little there. He has a major problem in a very sensitive area. Um, again, we'll get him up to the barn and, and find out for sure. But I'm afraid he's broken his penis, which technically, I guess to be more medically accurate, it's a penile hematoma that these bulls can suffer from. A lot of folks just use the common name of saying they broke their penis but um he was actually over there with a cow i mean he wasn't trying to breed her actively but behaving relatively normally for a bull so may not be as painful and as out of commission as i would expect but um yeah usually it occurs you know it's an injury either sustained during breeding which i think is most likely or potentially from fighting with another bull. But our challenge, we'll see if we can get him trailed to the barn without taking everyone else with us. And if we have to, we will. But um, yeah, we just moved him into this pasture. Of course, as luck would have it, this is the absolute furthest pasture from the barn, from the corrals. So but, uh, he's not wanting to cooperate. Let's put the camera down for a minute. All right, got him cut out from the cow herd for the most part. Gate right over there, buddy. Let's see if we can use the trees to try to lose us. Go on, bud, take a right now. Okay. So, so far, so good. I'm going to shut these gates. Hopefully he won't do like that 503 cow and turn around and just jump right out. Ace is slightly stirred up for some reason. Yet another one of the young bulls over here wondering where he's getting to go. Now, buddy, this isn't some kind of reward. I don't know if it's really a punishment or anything either, but it's uh, just necessary if we're gonna ever get him back right or have any chance of that. We don't have to be in a hurry. I imagine that thing flopping around can't feel too good. Go on, big guy. Been watching our previous ones. We've had just record 
heat, done under heat advisories every day. Um, finally had a little break in that this morning. It's like mid 60s. It's, it feels nice, like really nice. Riding the side by side as I was catching the horses, it was you know, like just for a split second, was kind of wishing I had on long sleeves. But it's one reason why we're doing this this morning. In full disclosure, I recognized a problem with him yesterday. Oh, come on, dude. Go that way. Gate is right up there on this fence row. And yeah, we're working. Um, but it was much too late in the morning to mess with him. At that point, made the decision that it was just already way too hot. Uh, and we knew we were gonna have to trail him, you know, a fair little distance back to the house. And now I think he understands the objective. Go on through the gate there, big boy. Yeah, I guess one of the other things, maybe the point I was originally trying to make when I got distracted by, yeah, we couldn't, couldn't deal with him yesterday. It was way too hot and like it was just gonna be far too much heat stress on him and the rest of the animals. And so we, uh, as you see, can urinate, which we knew obviously if he was unable to do that, he wouldn't be alive. But it actually looks a little better today than it did yesterday. It was, I don't know, I'd say twice that swollen. So we'll see, may not turn out to be quite as terrible of a problem. Um, or maybe I misdiagnosed him originally, but we'll get him up there to the barn where we can get him in the chute and do whatever we need to do with him. Okay, there we go. It's a good deal. Make sure he has some water over there. There should be still plenty of water in the trough. Haven't been any animals in here since we sold this last of the feeder steers. Yeah, water in the trough. There's actually plenty of grass in here. Just because, again, haven't been any animals in there in a few months. But, yeah, we're going to shut him up. Uh, of course, we'll run him in the chute here in just a bit. I may go, um, may wait until my dad can join me. The, uh, not a problem being a small animal vet that I really ever deal with and never dealt with it in a bull. Uh, he is the, the OG vet in the family. And so if we, uh, and, and having done large animal work for many years, he'll, he'll have a better idea of what we're looking at, what we can do. Speak a little more about a broken penis again it's really not a broken penis um, it's not the most accurate way to describe it um, but a penile hematoma not a whole lot you can do for those um, rest getting him separated from the other animals were obviously breeding which is where i think most likely the injury would have occurred or fighting one of the other bulls where he can't do any of that anymore we'll treat we'll see and probably get him, give him something anti-inflammatory to help with the, the pain and the swelling. The face didn't even break a sweat. I mean, that's that's unbelievable with the temperatures we've been having. That we can actually do that this morning. And not have all of us just drenching wet. But um, I think the wife and kids are going to even ride the ponies this morning um, for that same reason. Which is now 6:30, but well, I was expecting they were going to get an early start, but. I guess they'll get down here when they get down here. And there they come. I want to take advantage of these cooler temperatures this morning. Get out here and check on these boys too. They, uh, the last week or so, it's been hard. Hadn't really uh, put eyes on all of them. I don't know, in probably a week or so, just because it's just been so hot and miserable. Hot, and then the horse flies have been eating us up, eating them up, but eating me up too when I'm out here. But yeah, actually, this is going to be more of them than we've been getting. Let's we'll see. If they all show up, we may try to rotate pastures even. But that may be getting a little too ambitious. We'll see. Okay, so I'm like 99% sure this is all 65 of them. Um, so what we're going to do is go close the gate we just came through, see if we can get them to follow us up to the north end and rotate pastures. They are not out of grass here at all, as you can see. But I don't know, it's been probably three weeks since they've been in those other pastures. Um, that is the biggest of all the pastures here. Um, 
all that grass is going to be getting way over mature if it's not already there so we'll go ahead and move them to fresh fresh pasture and most of them have come on through still got a few stragglers coming i think it should be 12 more to come but yeah our gully that's washing there at the gate is getting <laughs> massively worse although with not any rain over the last couple of weeks it hasn't gotten worse recently but and not sure how many more big rains it's going to take for I can't drive through there anymore. Not many, I'm going to say. Come on, boys. Come on, y'all. Come on through there. And the body there is the last one. So, pasture successfully rotated. While we're way back here on this side of this pasture, because I don't drive all the way back here every day when I'm checking them. See our mineral feeders in a massive mud hole there. About as dry as it's going to get, which I shouldn't say that because there's no rain in the forecast. We'll go ahead and hook a chain onto that so we can get it to move. And that mud is just like glue and just suctions down on that sucker, but got her pulled out of there up here to just a little higher ground, which there's still a fair amount of mineral in there. But say so we don't drive back here that often, I've got a bag of mineral with me. We're gonna go ahead and fill it up. Pull down alleyway. There you go. Swollen there. It's swollen. Really just there on the pre piece. Well, that, that well, he was a lot worse swollen yesterday. It looks like. Can you unroll it? All right, so we got him up, and kind of like I mentioned earlier, I don't think he's near as swollen today as he was yesterday. And really. I don't think he's got a hematoma. Okay, so it may not be a hematoma. Be a trauma down here. Just a trauma at the pre -piece. Yeah, it's just swollen. Probably gonna need to do a little hydrotherapy on it. Alright, we can do that. No, it ain't. No, this is what. Okay. Well, he was he was severely swollen, even more so yesterday than he is right now. Of course, no, yeah, you can feel the penis. It's, it's fine. Right. Okay, then they dodged the bullet, but so, still got an issue there. Yeah, still got a problem. Well, not a broken penis or a penile yeah, hematoma. Low parathymosis. All right, so what do you suggest? I, well, still I do antibiotics and steroid and hydrotherapy and keep him up here. Well, yeah, we're going to, his breeding season's over. It's we're only about two weeks left anyway. Okay, so we're going with a little hydrotherapy just to help with the swelling. But I'm gonna examine it a little closer too after rinsing him off. But as Dad and I were discussing, may uh, he may have dodged a major bullet. Uh, the, the entire penis, um, you know, just only skin palpates normally, and I'll. I'll show you kind of more where you would see a problem if it was the actual hematoma. But, yeah, he was a lot swollen, more kind of just throughout all this region yesterday, even back uh, more towards the scrotum, but not so much today. So, we're just going to do this, just a little cold water to uh, you know, help with some of the swelling. But, yeah, if you weren't looking close today, you wouldn't even realize it was maybe necessarily a problem. And, of course, this is more of an issue and the Brahma type cattle, um, of course it's been a Brangus bull, just because the pre -puce and all is a lot more pendulous, and so just, just a little more risk of all sorts of injuries to the hardware down there, but yeah, thankfully it does not look like a break. A broken penis would have basically been, meant, you know, he was headed for slaughter, because um, even if they get over that, you worry about they'll do it again, you know, with subsequent breeding seasons. Um, and a lot of them, it's not even a situation where, um, you know, once they get over it, that they can extend, um, you know, normally with an erection to be able to uh, service a cow. So, yeah, he may have, have literally dodged the bullet. All right, now we've taken that cold water off there for a second. You kind of drawn her up there. Um, of course, flies pretty bad. I don't know. Yeah, obviously that's a little tender. Quite 
clearly he can here tonight. A lovely job to have. Just wanting to examine everything. I don't know how much additional good we're doing him here. I just wanting to really examine everything. Yeah, clearly. Got a laceration abrasion right there. That may really be the extent of the injury. Um, we're gonna stop messing with it. We're gonna go ahead and give him a shot of an antibiotic, an anti-inflammatory, and then uh, we're gonna keep him up here in this barn lot for the next few days. That's where we can run him in here, do the hydrotherapy. Um, if we need to add any additional treatments, we will, but nice, cool, shady spot in the barn, water, we'll get him some feed, everything he'll need. So injection, so an injection of our anti-inflammatory and our antibiotic. Just gave him two antibiotic injections. He's big enough. We split it into two sites, but yeah, we'll back him out of there and uh, leave him alone. Uh, examine him again tomorrow. I'll probably do some more hydrotherapy. I hope you can see right there. Obviously, you can probably see the vapor trail, but there's an air show going on this weekend in Mellington. I believe that is probably the Blue Angels right there. It's four of them. But pretty neat. Probably didn't expect we'd get an air show. Well, we have a, I don't know what, what's the, the we got wide range we cover here. We got penile injuries, naval air shows, you know, hay baling, new calves being born, you know, sometimes doing some, some, farm maintenance work you just never know um, what the full range of what we're gonna topics we may cover here at Hurricane Creek Farms okay as you can see we've gone ahead and hooked up to the the bat wing mower the bush hog rotary clipper whatever you may call it in your part of the country or the world but um, we typically call it a bush hog pasture clipper whatever but I'm going to get it serviced, greased up, whatnot, and be ready to maybe start clipping some pasture tomorrow. We're not going to do that today, but thought, ah, it's only 4.30. We'll get it pulled out and, and make sure everything is in working condition. All right. I think that might be all the grease fittings. Probably need to pull out the manual and double check that. But, whew, I got hot. Not not nearly as hot today as it has been, but it got hot. The pneumatic grease gun is nice though. Makes things just a little simpler, especially when you got a bunch of bunch of alamites to hit on equipment like this. But, um, yeah, I think I'm actually gonna jump on the little mower, actually lawnmower, mow the grass, and then may uh have a cold beverage enjoy just the rest of the evening with the family but um appreciate y'all watching we're gonna like say be moving on um keep tuning in we'll see what the outcome is eventually with that bull although i'm pretty optimistic now much more so than i was oh uh, this morning certainly yesterday when i first found that injury but we'll be getting some pastures clipped <clears throat> excuse me as well be getting back in the hay field just as soon as we've got some ready if we ever get any rain in the forecast, we'll do some fertilizing too. But thank y'all. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you've had a chance to check out the Talk Dirt to Me podcast. Um, should have a good one this week. I already know what the topic's going to be. Um, should just be a good discussion. We had a week off. Any of you are avid listeners and noticed that. Um, just couldn't make it happen this past week. Variety of circumstances. But we'll promise to have a good one coming up this week. And uh, y'all remember, eat beef and God bless.